Ladies and gentlemen, you're normally uh, maybe used to having Mike Thomas and Elaine from Munich 58 uh, here to welcome everybody and to introduce the Match Day Munich Memorial event. Uh, unfortunately, uh, Mike and Elaine, who generally run and organize this event, are unable to be with us today. Uh, but Mike has written some stuff for me to read and I'll pretend to be him, okay? Mike says, thank you for joining us at Old Trafford today. It's heartwarming to see so many of you here. We well recall the inception of this event when it was an informal supporters gathering with only a handful of people. It is especially poignant to recall those early days led by Jez Mason, who you can read about in the brochure I doubt Jez ever envisaged what we would see today, but I would like to take this public opportunity to thank him. So those are Mike's words of introduction. And after he said that, Mike says to you all, I'd now hand over to Rev John, who will lead us through this event. So I'm Rev John. And this is me reading my words, okay? Uh, ladies, gentlemen, children, fellow United supporters, I want to welcome you all to this place where for many years, those tragic events of the 6th of February, 1958 have been remembered. I'm Rev John. I'm honored to have served this club as their chaplain for over 26 years since the summer of 1992. But I'm now retired from that role. Nonetheless, I'm very happy to have been asked again to lead the Munich Memorial events. So on behalf of all at Manchester United, I thank you for being here this afternoon and I welcome you all, including any Crystal Palace fans who are around, I welcome you to this solemn and reflective occasion we remember what happened on a slush-covered Munich runway 65 years ago. We are so grateful for the way each year, both on Munich Day itself, the 6th of February, and on the day of the home game nearest to it, this area near the Munich plaque becomes a place of poignant and respectful remembrance. Here today, Mike, Pete, Katie, Steve and Adrian I should have missed Mike's name out, shouldn't I? We'll recall in songs and poetry the tragic story of lives lost on that cold, grey Munich afternoon. We are grateful for their preparations and for so much help that has been provided by the club to support and to enhance this Supporters Remembrance event today. So this is what is planned. Pete is going to sing for us. Poems are going to be read by Katie and Steve and Adrian. I will introduce an act of remembrance. I'll read the roll of honor and we'll observe a minute's silence. Pete's going to sing again. I'll lead a closing prayer and blessing and then I'll read Mike's vote of thanks and Katie will round off our time with a final chant. Okay, Katie? So first of all, Pete Martin will sing, with the help of yourselves, I think the words are in your brochures, The Pride of Football. Have you all found the page with the words on? Anyone who wants to join in, please do, you're very welcome. So many years since you were taken, the pride of football, our us be babes. We've shed our tears and watched the news reels whilst you have slumbered in your graves. Though life's moved on, the reds continue. We've plumbed the depths, we've touched the sky, 
Our memories of the flowers of Manchester, like Man United, will never die. Roger Byrne, our worthy captain, Jeff and Letty, Salford Brave, David Pegg and Tommy Taylor, Mark and Liam, such pleasure gave. For all you men, you football stalwarts, death was instant, life was gone. For 15 days of pain and struggle, mighty Duncan lingered on. We don't forget the other victims, united players who survived. Some played on, achieving glory, some too injured to make the side. Our thoughts now turn to all non-players. This tragedy was theirs as well. The wretched grief for friends and families so far removed from where they fell. You are the strength and inspiration for those who play your roles today we look for flair and pace and passion to play the game united's way though last moved on the reds continue we plumb the depths we've touched the sky our memories of the flowers of Manchester, like Man United, will never die. Will never die, will never die. Like Man United, will never die. Will never die, will never die. Will never die. Like Man United will never die. Thank you. Thank you very much, Pete. Uh, we've got some uh, poetry for you. KD, first. Uh, a couple of poems, is it, KD? Yeah. I'm Katie Cup. Can you hear me, yeah? I'm Katie Cabano from the Munich Air Disaster Facebook page. Thank you all for coming. There was a group of young boys with passion and with skill, with courage and with pace. They attack teams at will. An opponent player's nightmare, but a manager's dream. The Busby Babes there were known as, oh, what a team. With Matt as their father, it allowed them to play. Loud in football, steely grit was a show on display. But they relished a the challenge, a much bigger test. So they ventured into Europe again to play against the best. But a loss of innocent lives that the club was about to mourn. The dream of the players and the fans was shattered and he was torn. How great they could have been, tragically I will never know. Due to that dark day in Munich and a heavy slushy snow. It shouldn't have happened and we'll ask ourselves why. But their spirits will live on and their memories will never die. So God has, so rest in peace as God has dealt your final fate to all the Busby Babes lost in 1958. Thank you. The lads they played a simple game. After seeing them, you could never look at football the same. Champions of England, all homegrown, but known far, far and wide beyond their own. On the way back from a trip, tragedy struck, which made the world believe United would slip. But through the ashes, the flowers regrew, and Manchester United became a new, new faces, new names, new heroes too. But the Busby Babes, we will never forget you. Although so long ago you did the part, no length of time will ever heal our heart. Least we forget 
that flowers grow through the ash. You will never be alone in the past, for the flowers of Manchester shall live on. Not just on this day, but past tomorrow's dawn. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Katie Cavana. And now we've got Steve Douglas to read a poem. Thank you, John. Many thanks to everybody supporting us today. This is just called Busby's Babes. On the snow shrouded 6th of February 1958, the Lord Burley, ambassador, took off an hour late. From Belgrade to Manchester after a three-all draw, they landed in Munich to wait for a thaw. Europe's top cup, the semi-finals were now waiting. Sat on the runway, the cold engines hesitated. Up the slippery steps, banter and card schools dealt. Put look where they sat for a tight seat belt. The BEA 609 roared into life, while Bella Miklos held tight to his wife. They rolled twice through deep slush to 85 knots. The pressure gauge went low, the plane had to stop. But all got off for a brew. Mark Jones lit his pipe. Late going home, but nobody griped. They fastened their overcoats, down some stewed tea, due now for liftoff for 15.03. Captain Thane and co-pilot Ken slowly revved up the hun to 110. The boys thought of home and seen their girls. Brave Billy Whaley said to his pals, well, if this is the time, I am ready. As the ex-RAF crew held the kite steady, they attempted to take off. The final third, the engine strained to gain a soaring bird. Past the return point, the plane slushed offside, skidded through fences across the white tide. A German home, a garage bedeviled their slide. The airspeed 57 just lay on her side. Great keeper Greg, he made the best saves of his career. He rescued Vera and Vesna despite his day's fear. He went back for his teammates to help pull them clear. Eight Busby babes became ages that day. Young men forever, in heaven they play. Captain Roger Byrne, the born leader from Gorton. Pendleton's finest fullback, Jeff Bent. Snake Ips, Eddie Coleman from Odsall, the youngest that went. Doncaster lad, David Pegg on the left out wide. Dublin's fleet-footed, Billy Wheeler inside. Mark Jones, the Yorkie centre half, to turn back the tide. Dudley's Colossus, Big Duncan, stood firm alongside. Barnsley's Tommy Taylor led the front line. Accompanied by our old boss, Walter Crickmer, trainer Tom Curry, and team coach Bert Wally, who magic sponged their shins when they got hurt. New dad, Bella Miklos, United fan, Willie Satinoff, Captain Raymond and Stuart Tommy Cable, all now sit on God's top table, with Frank Swift, and seven of his sport writer mates still typing up the match updates. Red Star pleaded with you for respect, wise up, give the United the Champions Cup. But a 5 2 with Milan ended our run. A heartbroken semi. It was over and done. Winger Johnny Berry, half packed Twiggy Blanche Flower, broke their bones, lost footballing power. Lucky to rise from hospital beds, never again pulled on Red Devil Red. Other scarred babes healed, played on to glory those names. <coughs> Led by Sir Matt and Jimmy Murphy to Buckwall's acclaim. Brickwall stopper, new skipper, Billy Fawkes. Thunderboots, Bobby Charlton. King Winger, Kenny Morgans. Artful dribbler, Albert Scanlon. Deadly in the box, Dennis Violet. And gifted goalies, Harry Gregg and Ray Wood. All these players did everything they could to honor the boys with the sky and keep the red flag flying high. So God bless them all. Thank you, Steve. Appreciate that. And now, Adrian, if you can come up, please. Adrian Keenan will read his poem. Uh, mine's just a, a short poem, but uh, it's from the heart. Um, I started supporting the babes in October 1957. Five months later, they were taken from me to heaven. This is my poem of that date, when I was just a boy of eight. 6th of February, 
1958, heaven turned to hell, when time stood still at the toll of the bell. My dad hushed me as the broadcaster read of the United team, seven or dead. In Munich, Germany, our football team died. My dad and I just sat there and cried. The news was slow to filter through who had survived of the chosen few. The relief of the living, the grief of the dead. What news next day was to lay ahead? Too scared to ask, not wanting to hear of more bad news, the news that I fear. My hero, Harry Gregg, that day was so brave, so many lives he did fearlessly save. Fifteen days later, another stab in the heart. My world once more was to fall apart. Big Duncan had gone, the greatest of all. He fought like a lion, but had to answer the call. The fight must go on. The babes would want that, to rise once again with Jimmy and Matt. The Busby babes will never die, because Jimmy Murphy kept the red flag flying high. Thank you. Thank you very much, Adrian. Thank you. I guess for many of us, uh, not for me, I'm a bit older than some, but for many of us, these events happen before our time. And I, I've talked to people and said, you've got to imagine, you know, what's your, what's your best, best side? The side of 99, the treble winning side perhaps? I, imagine eight of those 11 being taken out and killed, you know? That's, that's the sort of thing we remember today. We remember that 23 people were killed as a result of the Munich air disaster. There were eight players, three other employees, and a supporter included in that total. I've come across these words from the Old Testament. Ponder them. The race is not to the swift, or the battle to the strong, nor does food come to the wise, or wealth to the brilliant, or favor to the learned, but time and chance happen to them all. Moreover, no one knows when his hour will come. Just as a fish is caught in a net, or birds are taken in a snare, so men are trapped by evil times that fall unexpectedly upon them. What the writer is saying is that we cannot fully explain or indeed avoid disaster when it comes. But later in the book of Ecclesiastes, he says, however long you live, enjoy your life, and remember your Creator before you get too old. And fear God and keep His commands. Wise advice. And in the same book of the Bible we read, There is a time to weep, and a time to laugh, and a time to mourn, and a time to dance. Today, here in this place, is a time to mourn and a time to weep. We now stand in respectful silence to hear again the roll call, the names of all who were killed by that tragic air crash. So today in our hearts and before God, we remember eight journalists, Alf Clark, Don Davies, George Follows, Tom Jackson, Archie Ledbrook, Henry Rose, Eric Thompson, and Frank Swift. We remember Captain Kenneth Raymond, who was the co-pilot. Tommy Cable, who was one of the stewards. And Bella Miklos, the travel agent. And yet as United fans, perhaps 
we particularly remember those who were part of our club. Walter Crickmer was club secretary. Bert Wally was the chief coach. Tom Curry was the trainer. And there was Willie Satinoff, a close friend and supporter of United. And perhaps especially on this match day, when we are here to show our support for the Manchester United team, we remember the eight Busby babes who so tragically died as a result of the Munich air crash on the 6th of February, 1958. So here we remember Jeff Bent, Roger Byrne, Eddie Coleman, Duncan Edwards, Mark Jones, David Pegg, Tommy Taylor, and Liam Billy Whelan. So let us stand in a minute's silence, bow our heads, and remember those lost at Munich in 1958. Thank you for your respectful silence. Pete, can you come and sing The Flowers of Manchester? On February the 6th, 1959, some people gathered here on the forecourt of Old Trafford. They just wanted to pay tribute to the victims of Munich and Old Trafford was the obvious place to gather. This continued for 40 years. Then, as you've already heard, in the year 2000, a United fan, Jez Mason, stuck a piece of paper, A4 paper, over on the wall over there. Uh, he came along and sang Flowers of Manchester. He, he said that Flowers of Manchester was going to be sung at 3 o'clock. Came along and sang the Flowers of Manchester with the intention that people would join in. Sadly, not many did. I heard about this in, 19, in, in 2004, and I joined Jez singing. In 2006, Jez decided that he no longer wanted to join the gathering and I started to lead the singing. After such small beginnings, more and more people heard about the gathering and joined us. By the time of the 50th anniversary in 2008, it was estimated that 5,000 people were gathered under the plaque and almost filled the concourse. I just want to pay tribute to the man who had the brilliant idea of starting this tradition of singing flowers on the anniversary of the Munich air crash. I met Jez a number of times and I've always made clear to anyone who would listen to me that it was Jez who had the, who had the vision to create this event. Jez died in September last year and I attended his funeral and I explained to his son Ollie that his dad's actions had a massive impact on many people's lives, especially mine. So, thank you Jez and to Ollie, be proud of your dad and what he started, not only here at Old Trafford but in Munich where a similar, similar event takes place every year. Now the flowers. Anyone who wants to join in, please do. One cold and bitter Thursday in Munich, Germany. Eight great football stalwarts conceded victory. Eight men will never play again who met destruction there. The flowers of English football, the flowers of Manchester. Matt Busby's boys were flying, returning from Belgrade. This great united family, all masters of their trade. 
The pilot of the aircraft, the skipper Captain Thane Three times they tried to take off and twice turned back again The third time down the runway, disaster followed close there was slush upon the runway and the aircraft never rose It ploughed on through the marshy ground, it broke, it overturned And eight of the team were killed as the brazing wreckage burned Roger Byrne and Tommy Taylor, who were capped for England's side And Ireland's jury, Johnny Berry and Jackie Black, oh sorry and Ireland's Billy Wheeler and England's Jeff Penn died Mark Jones and Eddie Coleman and David Pegg also They all lost their lives as it ploughed on through the snow Big Duncan he went to with an injury to his frame Johnny Berry and Jackie Blanche Flower will never play again the great Matt Busby lay there, the father of the team Three long months passed by before he saw his team again A trainer, coach and secretary and a member of the crew Also a sporting journalist who with United flew And one of them was Big Swifty who we shall never forget The finest English keeper that ever graced a net Oh, England's finest football team Its record truly great Its proud success is mocked By a cruel turn of fate Eight men will never play again Who met destruction there The flowers of English football The flowers of Manchester Thank you I just need to say I cocked up because the words changed last year for the first time we included uh, Johnny Berry. And I best of I'm sorry about that. Don't worry, that was great, Pete. Thank you very much. It has become a custom for us to remember those who coached or played for our club who have died since we last gathered on Munich Day. And so please show a respectful silence as we remember the contributions made to Manchester United by staff members and I'm sure there must have been more than these but the names I've been given are Danny Daniels, Jim Derbyshire and Dave Collins. We remember them. And on the playing side, uh, former manager Franco Farrell and players and they didn't make many appearances but they made a few uh, John Connaughton and Andy Gorham and today we also remember Alexander Kukin he was one of the founder members of the Kiev Reds and the Ukrainian Supporters Club on the 21st of March last year he was driving his family in their car when some invading Russian forces saw them and they shot at them Alexander was killed, his wife and daughter survived and had to undergo operations in hospital. And today, we remember them. And we also remember the life of Jess Mason. We've been told about him and the fact that he passed away in September. And how here with half a dozen people in attendance, in February 2000, he sang the Flowers of Manchester and now there's more than half a dozen of us here and we remember Jez and what he has done for this club so if you feel able to please bow your heads as I offer a final prayer and blessing gracious God in this place this afternoon we have remembered all who perished through the Munich air crash but particularly we have recalled those linked closely to our club. We thank you for them, for their contributions to our history, for the memories and stories that we have of them. And we pray now for your peace and your grace to touch the lives of all who still mourn their loss. And we remembered others before you who through different contributions 
have made their own mark on the life of this club. Lord, may you comfort all who mourn, and may the blessing and love and grace of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be with us all now and forevermore. And we say together, Amen. Now I've got in my script here, shortly Mike Thomas will bring us to the conclusion of the event. Uh, that's not possible. But I need to... We're used to election as well, and there isn't one today. Uh, but but we're, we are able to remember Mike's words, uh, where he says a thank you to people. So this is what Mike's given me. I'm pretending to be Mike, okay. As we close today's event, we'd like to say thank you to a number of people, including Rev John for leading today's tribute. Thank you, Mike. To Katie, Steve and Adrian for sharing their poems. To Pete for leading their singing. To Michael and Adrian from United who've helped in the logistics of this event. Uh, to the team down here today uh, who have erected the platform, it says. Uh, I think that's for Monday. And supported us here today. And finally, a huge thank you to the fans for supporting this event. We look forward to seeing you, maybe on Monday, maybe next year. So that's Mike's thanks. So thank you for coming, everybody. Thank you for all the people from Man U who have helped for today and for Monday. And thank you that we've been able to remember the Busby Babes, those that have uh, been killed at Munich, and remember the history of this club, which we support today and hope for a win against Palace. But I never pray for results, don't worry. <laughs> Katie's going to round us off with a chance. We'll never die, we'll never die. We'll never die, we'll never die. We'll keep the red flag flying high. We're Man United, we'll never die. Oh, lads and lasses, sure to see them coming. Fastest team in the world, sure to see us coming. All the lads and lasses, smile upon the faces, walking down the watery road. To see my busby's aces. Thank you. This is uh, Diego C. Palace. Please visit uh, to Munich. 58.co.uk um, Please visit them on their web page um, when you can. That was a really emotional tribute. Well done to everyone from uh, Munich58.co.uk that uh, did what they did. Very well done. Oh, wow, that was uh, really emotional. Um, very nice tribute from Manchester United. May they all uh, rest in peace. Thank you for watching and uh, again please go and visit munich58.co.uk Take care everybody.